Hey there, you're watching Airsoft Action. I'm here with Phil Bucknell, one of our contributors. And Phil, um, you've got the GDR15 from GLPS, is it? Uh, GB, GBLS. GBLS, yes, it's, uh, that's it. Yeah, it's, like, it's acronyms are plenty. It's yeah. the DAS, the Dynamic Action now, System. Everyone's raving about it. Yep. What's so special? Well, I think what this offers is a real shift in the way AEGs have worked. And if we crack it open, you can have a quick look inside. And it splits apart like a gas blowback rifle. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can see that. So it's kind of like a hybrid. The gearbox looks a bit like a PTW. Yeah. Um, combined with a gas blowback rifle trigger box. But then when we get to the top receiver, it splits like a gas oh, blowback so again. You, all your so piston assembly just slides You've got your nozzle, like that, yeah. piston, mainspring is in the bolt carrier group and it uses like a proper charging handle as well. It's quite nice. So it's. It's kind of like bringing the best of both worlds. You get the recoil. And a bit of the realism, but without the unreliability, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, once we can get it back in. <laughs> we have just only just got these in at Airsoft Action, so we're not that familiar with them just yet. There we go. So you've put the charging handle back in. Drop the bolt carrier group into the upper receiver. Put it all back down. Pin through. And unlike uh, a normal AEG, you actually have to physically charge it. Charge to start it. it. So yeah. I just put my finger on the bolt hole there. And it actually looks like a proper extracting tool on a bolt, doesn't it? That's, it does. like, that's cracking. We'll show you and close for that in a second. The hop chamber looks, you know, it's very reminiscent of the WA gas blowback yeah. uh, hop chamber, but also has, you know, overtures towards the real one. I someone at a one. casual glance could think that was real, to be honest. It's Definitely. It's almost like an extraction tool on, a, on the head of a bolt, you know? It is. It's really nice. I mean, it feels solid, it's not too heavy. Um, you can feel there's quite a lot of weight in the rear because it's got a proper buffer tube yeah. with a spring and a buffer in there. And you've there. got to stop with like a nice bit of battery storage in yeah, there. Yeah, what I really your... like, I mean, I'm a big fan of the PTS uh, polymer products anyway. So the, the grip I find is just got slightly more of a vertical angle yeah. um, than the standard A2 grip. And the EPS, it just feels solid. And you're right, the battery storage is just ginormous. So build quality, yes. we're looking at something fairly sound now. But the thing we is, are. does it fire as well as it feels? And I think we're going to find out on the range shortly. We've just set the hop, done a few rounds just to try and get the trajectory as flat as possible using 0.25 BBs, 11.1 volt battery, everything else is standard, there's nothing changed on the gun and uh, we're going to just see how far it will actually shoot. That seems to be going too high so just need to change the hop down a little bit, take a little bit off. And then we'll have another go. So you can probably see it has a do not adjust. So I'm assuming that from the factory they've got it set to the optimum motor height for the gearbox. Um, and it does say in the manual not to adjust the motor height. Um, the hop though, you can adjust. It's not the easiest to get to. Very reminiscent of the gas blowbacks. Take the bolt carrier group out. But it's somewhere safe because no doubt it's expensive. And you get a little Allen key in the kit. And that goes into a little bolt in there. So I can feel that's got it. So we'll just try a little bit that way. It's, um, like I mentioned earlier, it's very similar to the Western Arms gas blowback style hop. Um, so you have the Allen key adjuster at the bottom of the, the hop chamber. Don't know if you can see that just down there. Uh, gas blowback or an AEG barrel system that it uses? Um, I think it's an AEG barrel yep. um, and I think it's something like a 6.05. Um, it is tighter than, than some barrels. So now we've got the hop adjusted we can drop the bolt carrier group back in. I really like that bit. <laughs> That oh, just, yeah. So satisfying. That just works every time. Is it worth 1,600 quid though? That's the, that's the question. Well, that is the $64,000 question, <laughs> I guess. Is it worth 1,600 pounds? Um, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. It's 
got a nice kick to it. It really does kick nicely. And the trigger, it is a lot heavier. I've heard lots of noise about how heavy the trigger is. Is it a big problem? It is. It is heavy. I mean, that is quite a break on it. Certainly heavier than any gas blowbacks I've used and, and considerably heavier than any AEG. But it isn't... It, it still feels nice. It's very crisp when it breaks. Yeah. And obviously, if you're on full auto, you've only got to pull it once anyway. <laughs> so I would say... It's something you're going to have to get used to, but it, if that's the only thing putting you off buying the gun, don't, don't let it. That's what I would say. Now, standing here watching Phil's range testing shots, um, started off with a bit over hop, so we went down a little bit, and I can now see the actual shots are landing at the 60 metre point. Um, they do seem to be pretty consistent in flight, so until we actually get around to the accuracy test part of it, we're not going to be too sure. But right now, um, if I was playing the game and I'm 60 metres away, he's able to hit me. They will be dropping onto me at like very, very low velocity, but I'm still going to be hit. So. I really like how you have to cock it before each shot. The gadget is now at 60 metres. We know it can make 50, so how is it at 60 metres? So, again, 60 metres away. As I was saying, on single shots, they'd be running out of juice for still able to hit me. It's not that I can see them falling in front of me, they're actually standing falling at me. I could be hit by a lucky shot. On full auto, when fire fill, fill, fire fill, when Phil fired a burst or two, they're actually going that little bit further. Um, so, far away, guys! Okay, we've done another hop adjustment. This is quite interesting, actually. We're easily reaching 70 metres now that hop up's set. Now, they are running out of juice at 70 metres, but that's actually quite impressive. So, yeah, they're... It would be a very lucky shot that got me, but they're reaching me. They're just running out of energy around about the 70 metre mark. So that's actually pretty impressive. You have to excuse the glare. It's a very bright day. Okay, guys, that was really interesting. So at 50 metre point, where me and Tom found out we were actually in danger at a game, I could see the BBs initially starting to drop just beyond it, about 55. Then you adjusted the hop. All of a sudden, you were going up to about 60, 65. Sounds good. Now, the interesting thing is, once you went into full auto burst, 70. Yeah, I did notice on single, it was a lot more variable. On full auto, it seemed to, yeah. whether it was the limited time the BBs were in, yeah. the hot, I don't know, but it seemed to be a lot more accurate but that's full a, auto. It's a good 15 metres more yeah. than lower price point AEGs. Okay. Yeah, I've hit it with the same ammunition. Yeah. So, so far, in that million dollar question, $64,000, but actually a 1600 pound question. It is. What we're actually finding out so far is that, yeah, you should, so far you're getting about 10 meters more maximum range. Now, whether that translates down to accurate range, we've yet to find out. Awesome, yeah. we'll try that next. So we've done the maximum range test and got about 65 meters, which is pretty impressive. What we need to know now is can you actually hit anything? So we're gonna do the AATV effective range test. And we define that as being able to make five out of 10 shots onto a man-sized torso at whatever distance. So this time we've got the torso set up at 40 meters, and then if you make it, we'll take it back. If you make it again, we'll take it back further. So in your own time, do a few sighting shots to make sure you've got your hold over, and then fire 10 shots when you're ready. Okay, I'm going to give Phil five shots to get his holdover back in, then ten shots for accuracy to actually test it. So, Phil, far away! Hit! 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 Miss! Miss! Hit! So, out of those 15 rounds, five holdover, ten for accuracy. Um, overall, 
you're getting about two thirds hits on this target straight from Newton. That's pretty good. And some of them were missing whizzing straight by the side. So I think realistically, if I was a player, nearly every one of them was going to hit me. And I'd expect that from a, from an AG, that's a decent AG. It's at, at 40 metres, you at would 40 want. At 40 metres, I'd expect that, especially with an Octacon, yeah. it, you know, so yeah. to correct your, your Well, own. there is no magnification. Oh, it's just a red dot so on that one. It's just a red dot, it is, but yeah. it, is, it does certainly help with the aiming. So, so far, that's actually better than average. Um, Sounds good. Quite pleased with it. And we're going to move on to the 50 metre point and see if we can see if it's as consistent at 50 metres. Let's see. Let's see. Two eights of 50. That's a grand total of 30 shots because we did some compensations and yeah. did second round. So out of the 30, we're looking at six hits on the target, but again, a lot of very near misses, literally going like that, going like that. One even hit the frame. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so if you hit some of legs and arms and the head there, you might be getting a few more. Yeah. But I think that's because your hop there just needs bedding in a little bit. I, I would, wouldn't disagree with you, Gatch. And I also think, you know, there were a couple of shots where I could definitely. As I pulled the trigger, I saw the wind pick up, yeah. and I saw that affect the BB's trajectory um, quite dramatically. So I think we could have possibly got a couple more on target if we'd been in a completely wintry environment, yeah. but let's face it, you never you, are. You're not going to game in that environment. No. Now, you were saying, that actually, so talking about gaming, again, you'll find single shots a lot. Now, a lot of people do like single shots for realism. Um, you're saying it's a bit of a, bit of a pull on it? Well, Eight pound pressure or something like that? I, I haven't got a trigger pull gauge yeah. to hand, but it's heavy. It is heavy. Now, I know there's been a lot of talk on the forums and on Facebook about it, with people saying oh, it's only a few pounds, going up to it's as much as ten pounds. Now, I don't know exactly, but I fired maybe eight magazines through this. Yeah, most of it on single tip. shot, and yeah. my fingertip is is sore. But it's a damn nice gun to shoot. Yeah, yeah. I can feel it in my shoulder as well from the recoil, and on, on full auto, even in little bursts, it is very satisfying to, to pull that trigger and feel the weight as it, the bolt goes That's back. Interesting you should mention full auto because when we did our optimum, oh, sorry, extended maximum range test, we sort of found out that the full auto was giving us that little bit of extra range. So I'm going to ask you to go back and do one last shoot, okay. putting a couple of bursts of auto into this, Let's just to see if that extra bit of like you know. Boom, if you have spread, if we're getting nice tight bursts, we're still one hit, we're expecting three or four hits at the same yeah. time. Just see what the spread's like when we Let's do, do it. that. We did the single shot testing and uh, it was good. You know, we were getting hits on target at 40, 45 metres. One thing with this particular rifle, I don't know whether it's common across the whole um, DAS lineup, but this one was shooting a lot more consistently, a lot more accurately in full auto. So, what we're going to do is we're going to try and do four five to seven round bursts see if that improves the accuracy so the target is at 50 meters 0.28 bbs again let's give it a go Okay, so Phil, um, we just did your full, full auto first, and I think you're just bloody unlucky there because I've got <laughs> my footage of watching it from this end, and you can hear them splattering off, and you're not hearing one round splattering off, you're hearing several. You can even see the paint chipping off yeah, yeah, the legs of the target and parts. Um, one burst, I can hear it impacts on the paper, but you've only got one penetration you can see. Now, because we've got so many hits now, some of them are actually hitting the same points. So I'm not yeah, just making it up, you can actually see like double strikes and yeah. stuff. But I think, again, our test is on a play carrier size, battle vest size target. Actually hitting a player 
and I'm not trying to change the criteria of the test, I'm just trying to be realistic, yeah. at the ranges you engage in airsoft, that is doing what you'd expect to do in a game. It would hit an, it would hit an opposition player. Yeah. At 45, 50 metres. And somewhere on the body. Yeah, and like, if you look at the this clear line of sight, very rarely, unless you're playing like an MOD Fibula site with spaces between buildings, very rarely do you get a 50 metre line, clear line exactly. sight. So when Tom and I have looked at optimum range and maximum range, etc. in the past, we have been looking at world perfect conditions. Yeah. Uh, and I think... I think if we were in a woodland scenario, the ranges would be 30 metres, you'd yeah. be getting 8 out of 10 shots on the target, but yeah, this, this is an initial very, very first test of a bot gun that's literally come out of the box for the first time today. So I'd be interested in seeing what it's like when that hopper when that hop is yeah. fully bedded in. So we said, is it worth £1,600? I think, if you want the realism, it probably is right now. I, my personal view is, um, I, I could see myself buying one. Yeah. I don't think I could justify the full price. 1600 is very expensive for what it is, but what it is is unique as well. Yeah. You know, there, there is nothing like this on the market. So I don't think, I don't think either of us are saying it's a Sunday skirmish yet. Uh, this is the thing you have to buy to compete. No, We're saying I, if you want something that's got that nice chink bolt noise and it's got the yeah. brakes open like a real rifle, yeah. then yeah, if you want uh, if you want essentially a firearm simulator that you play airsoft with, then this is it. Yeah. And I think that's where they're aiming at. This isn't aimed at your know, once a month skirmisher, this is aimed at the guys who would drop £2,000 on night vision goggles. Yeah. They buy Arcturix trousers and Guilty. <laughs> cry plate carriers, not naming any names. Um, but this is a PTW. This yeah. is what, in my mind, a PTW should be. It has the reciprocating bolt, the proper full moving bolt behavior. It has that realism. It has a trigger that feels like a real trigger, if not slightly heavier, uh, but it breaks crisply. It feels good. You know, you can function this. You can do drills like you would on the real AR. And it sounds amazing. And it does not feel good to shoot as yeah. well. So all in all, I think if you are the sort of player who thinks nothing of spending four to six hours in a ditch at a MOD base. Yeah. With two thousand pounds of the night vision equipment and two hundred and fifty. You're gonna love this. Yeah, yeah. I mean it has great quality uh, parts, they're all licensed, you know, Centurion Arms Rail, PTS polymer parts, Saracoated receivers. So it's tough as old boots. And I think, yeah, yeah, this has got a place, definitely. So definitely one for the dedicated Milson must look out for, but we're not going to see if anyone's hired. A serious for a while, Sunday player who's got a bit of spare cash and wants to treat themselves. Yeah. Um, I can't see many people who are just getting into the sport running um, around. But yeah, it is a nice it is a nice AEG. It feels like a gas blowback, works like an AEG. I imagine it will have the reliability of an AEG, uh, so the consistency that you'd expect. Yes, it's nice. So I think that concludes our sort of like preliminary tests. I reckon we should get it back on the range in maybe a month or so's time when Sounds it's had some plan. real world experience. Let's say that hot rub was a little bit bedded in. Yeah. Um, we'll see if we can get a little bit more out of it. Let's give it a go there. Nice one. Cheers, Thank you very much.